a major thing that's fantastic about these workshops is the chance to hear all this fantastic science that our um, community is doing. And there's been a great set of talks um, already. What we, we wanted to do uh, this, yeah, at the workshop was also have this opportunity to get community input related to uh, some of the new tools and functionality that were uh, developed, yeah, developing and seeking to develop within magic. So what we're going to do is do a little bit more of a, uh, introduction on some of the sort of initial ideas, particularly related to these, these subdomain views, um, within the database. Um, and then to use that, uh, to sort of put out questions to you all, um, for some breakout group discussions. Um, and so those we've categorized into uh, three three broad topics here: uh, paleomagnetic poles related to the goals of developing that subdomain, rock magnetic data related to a lot of goals related to both data getting rock magnetic data into magic and also the subdomain search view, and then also sort of broadly a software category, uh, which we can sort of think of both sort of community input on tool development, tool tool maintenance, um, ease ease of uh, interacting both in pulling data in in and out of magic. Um, so, uh, myself, um, and Rupert, who's, yeah, Rupert's here and is with the sort of tech, technical brains between, uh, implementing a lot of these, um, uh, these, these facets of these, of these subdomain views, uh, and then, uh, Max, Maxwell Brown will also come up to sort of introduce and motivate some of the rock, rock magnetism part, part here. Um, so one of the things I just wanted to do quickly, because I think it's useful to motivate the goals behind making these subdomain views, is just for us to have a quick, um, quick look around the current the current magic magic site. Um, and so we saw this in Anthony's talk, highlighting that if you go to the search interface, you see this extraordinarily uh, richness of contributions, right? This sort of eight eight million uh, measurements. So that's great as a sort of metric of how much data is here. But then, from a data discovery and interrogation point of view, uh, can be can be a challenge, which is why sort of trying to build in these different entry points for different communities into the database uh, was identified as a as a priority for what's what's being built next. To start off, if I just wanted to highlight some of the tools that are already here in this regard. So if we pop into the search interface here, um, we can see that there are these tabs which are very much aligned. Uh, with the the current data data model structure, um, and one of the things, if we talk about, say, just the paleomagnetic poles example example, is that those um, in the data model uh, locations are groups of sites. So that can be a place where you went in the world and collected data. It also can be a summary of a result that's based on sites. So a paleomagnetic pole is one example of this, is where you're taking a mean of different sites together. In the old data model, this was a separate results table that now lives within locations. And you can see that that is now highlighted um, within poles. Um, so that's great, it's there, but it has this sort of levels of being uh, uh, sort of buried, buried in. So it's trying to sort of surface surface that up. So that's one thing that we want to get feedback on. One thing that there are sort of functionalities for, for example, let's look for um, in polls. Let's say I'm interested in, uh, say, Cretaceous poles, um, and I I want them to be uh, somewhere somewhere in the northern hemisphere. So let's say they're between 45 degrees and 50 degrees uh, north. So here um, I've put in those filters, and one of the things that we have built out and sort of working towards the subdomain view is when you click on this polls tab, you are getting filters here that are more applicable, likely to what you would want for a paleomagnetic pole. Uh, maybe it, it's age where it is. Um, perhaps some filter of what its alpha 95 is. Another thing that is is here is there's the uh, the opportunity to go in and look at where these data are coming from. So let's say you're particularly excited that there's a data set from here uh, in Mongolia. You can click on it and you can see that this is a contribution that came in uh, yesterday from from Dawe, who's been making many contributions to the database from that couch in the back. Um, <laughs> uh, and that you then have have the opportunity to sort of have data discovery in in that way. So I just want to highlight that as some of what's already um, sitting here in terms of richness of, of, of search and these tools that are already within the database, but we want to find ways that those are sort of uh more yeah readily 
readily accessible. And here you can see I'm sort of drilling down to um, different levels. So for example, we're in this Mongolia contribution right now because I identified it on the search map and we can come up and do things like look at these, these plots that are generated here for a specific uh, specimen that was analyzed and we're seeing the measurement level data um, associated with, with that. Um, okay, so here um, the 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 goal here is that um, we were sort of developed. This is actually live as a as a beta right now, um, where uh, Rupert sort of yeah developed this uh, entry point. This would be the search interface subdomain views. So uh, the polls polls view that we are just looking at would be what you would sort of automatically get pulled pulled into uh, through through click, clicking on that. Um, but there are ideas about how that could be a richer search search interface. So this is a mock-up. This is not what you would see live there. Um, but the idea that you could see perhaps both site locations and actual rendered polls associated with them have search functionality that's maybe more richer, like being able to sort of draw over an area of the world instead of air, uh, entering latitude and longitude. But this is the sort of thing where there's so much possibility in what can be built, but we want to get community input in terms of what tools are useful to build up. So that's the idea with these these breakout groups. So there will be um, a, a room that the Paleomanic Coles group will, it's the first room out here. Um, and here's just a few questions to pose for thought for that group would be, what would your ideal poll search interface look like? What challenges and opportunities are there associated with Paleomanic poll databases? How do we support the community in contributions? And how do we deal with these issues of the community being really reliant on sort of highly curated paleomagnetic pool databases? Um, okay, and I'd like to bring, yeah, Max, uh, Maxwell Brown up to sort of motivate the rock magnetism breakout group discussion and provide more context on what they're up to. Yeah, thank you very much, Nick. So uh, my name is Maxwell Brown. I'm the facility manager at the Institute for Rock Magnetism at the University of Minnesota. Um, and the IRM is a NSF multi-user facility, and it's been funded for a long time now by NSF. It originally uh, began, oh, I think I have to get this thing out now, so, by uh, Shabir Banerjee, um, and this was in 1990. Um, and through the years, there's been lots of different kinds of changes through the IRM acquisition of more and more instruments, state-of-the-art instrumentation. We've been uh, keeping up with that. Um, uh, one port important part here is when the IRM database begins, and this is in 2004. So since that time, all visitors um, to the lab um, and all users of the lab in general, their data are uploaded to our IRM database. Um, and this is from any of our instruments um, the full measurement data um, are, are located in the database there. Um, so um, now in 2022, well, I'd like to say there have been efforts in the past to integrate the IRM database um, with MAGIC, but uh, with this new funded project, we can take a more serious approach with that um, to do that. So, uh, Pete and Josh are here, um, and they're, they're part of this team as well. We also have two programmers working with us um, as part of the project. So this is a view of one of the IRM database programs. This is the main portal that you can come through to look at all of your uh, different projects, you know, the site, sample, specimen, and you can search through this for all of your, your measurements. And we, our, our plan is to get all of this, all the data that you may acquire at the RM, uh, to be able to par be passed into the MAGIC database. But we also want to make it not just for our database going in there, but for anyone who has rock magnetic data to be able to pass it quickly into the database. So we are also very interested in your input about what you think would be important and how you might like to see that work. Um, in the database, we, we also have uh, a number of software programs that can analyze the data. Um, and many of these do quite advanced calculations on your data set. So this is an example of what we call our VSM ferret. So this takes uh, data required on uh, any of our VSMs 
and uh, you can read it in and it instantly makes a whole a whole bunch of calculations um, for example you have your ms mrs etc also has measures of the quality of the data and also whether your fit is linear or not so and there are there's too many things to go through here, but it's a, a rich program with a lot of power to it. So one thing we would like to do is make the, the power of these calculations available uh, to the general community through uh, the Jupyter Hub. So we'll be working on translating the codes for these softwares into things that everyone can use in the Jupyter Hub. Um, So I think Nick, Nick showed this already. So we're going to have a button that will work at some point coming up in the future, and it should filter you down to rock magnetic data. So this is a, a quick example of how it might look for hysteresis data. So this is pulling the measurement data for a study, and it plots, plots all the hysteresis loops in the specimen. So you can click on a loop, and then you could find out more information about this loop, uh, etc. Um, and we'll have other fields available too. For example, it will plot our backfield curves, susceptibility temperature curves, and FCZFC curves too, um, and other data that we might want to include there through time. Uh, at the moment, you, you can actually search through MAGIC by the method codes if you know what they are. For example, um, you can, you could put a susceptibility in there and it'll tell you a bunch of codes and you could tick a box and it does bring back all the susceptibility data in the database if you wanted to look at that. So we're going to build on, on that functionality to make this domain view so it's really focused on the rock magnetic aspects. So here's uh, three key questions we'd like to put to you all, and we, we're very interested in having your answers on these. So again, what would your ideal rock magnetic data search interface look like? What challenges and opportunities are there associated with incorporating rock magnetic data uh, more fully into magic? I think we wrote magnetite data, but we'll include all minerals. <laughs> uh, and then how do we support the community in contributing rock magnetic data? Because we really want to encourage you all to put your data in here. And we want to make that process as easy as possible for you all. Okay, so I think I'm going to hand back over to Nick. Thanks. Thanks so much, Max. Um, so another a very sort of overlapping one of these break, breakout groups, and you will be welcome to sort of you, you can choose your own adventure here, um, but you, and you're welcome to sort of uh, pop pop between different ones. Um, but is of course this sort of ease of of inter interacting uh, with with magic uh, can be supported through different software tools. And certainly, as Anthony, Anthony mentioned, uh, we want to have as many roots into the database as possible. But we also want to continue to build on this legacy of of tools um, that at least at least from this project that Lisa. Tokes initiated and is built um, built over decades uh, associated with PMAG, PMAG Pi. So there's a couple pieces of that. One is continuing to build build those tools out themselves. Um, the other is improving how those tools and workflows are, are are documented. So those those both are sort of par parallel things. Um, one thing that we've sort of done uh, in the in the sort of six months of the current um, of the current funding. The grant is to uh, develop a new doc documentation interface for PMEG, PMEG Pi, um, and so I just to sort of show that show that briefly here. Um, if you if you Google or use whatever default uh, search search that uh, um, Nick Nick Jarbo Nick Jarbo has has here, um, you will link link through to to this, um, which is the new documentation, effectively the. Uh, the sort of next generation of the PMAG Pi, PMAG Pi cookbook. Um, and one of the things that I mean, we're excited about here is this provides a way to stitch together sort of a rich array of, of doc documentation um, and including these uh, uh, you can have example Jupyter notebooks. So the notebooks that you actually can run on uh, the Jupyter, Jupyter Hub can also be sort of visualized here um, to be a level of, of documentation. So let's say you want to go ahead and uh, calculate um, Fisher, Fisher statistics. 
um, this using PMAGPI, these are Ill illustrated here. So this is, uh, we, we want, um, you know, there can be with these tools, uh, it can be hard to sort of find these root, roots of roots of entry. Um, and so this is one sort of project to try to um, put, put have a sort of one, one stop shop with that that we're continuing to, um, to develop. Um, okay, um, here also, um, yeah, and I guess we've we've mentioned this a couple times, and the hope tomorrow for those of you who are coming to our work work session together is you'll get some hands on experience with what what is this thing that they keep saying that's a, a Jupiter Jupiter hub. Um, the idea here is it provides a way to um, run run code that can programmatically uh, interface with data and magic and can contribute uh, analyze data create contributions. So we'll, those of you who are uh, sticking around tomorrow for that, this is an uh, example we'll, we'll get where we'll launch the Jupyter Hub and you without installing something locally can be running running this in the in the cloud. And we can, for example, uh, pull, pull down, uh, inspect, uh, use the ma uh, Magic API to down, download data, uh, then ingest that data and do things like conduct uh, statistical tests within this environment. So here we, the, what would be useful is sort of getting more of a sense of, and you know, maybe more of you will have more of a sense of this coming out of tomorrow uh, in terms of community feedback, in terms of what is should be prioritized in terms of building those those tools, um, and so that's will be some of the things we'll be walking walking through tomorrow um, with the tutorial. So we want this to be a continued conversation. Um, there are of course other other tools out here, so I highlight a tool that that Dawes um, uh, uh, helped build build out. Um, and spearheaded with paleomagnetism.org, which also has a as a magic magic interface. Um, uh, another tool related to to polls that um, his groups recently put out this apparent polar wonder path online. So and this also these sort of you know goals of taking the rich rich legacy of software development at the IRM and making that op openly openly available in the context of rock magnetic data in the in the database. Um, so these are sort of questions questions for this group is what what types of tutorials and formats of those tutorials um, would be would be most useful um, in the context of these templates and examples, what would be the most impactful. Um, and also what steps can be taken to foster a community of contributors to open source software, because the scope of this is all uh, needs to be uh, a sort of broad, broad effort. And one thing also within this is tools not only in external software, um, but also tools within the IR, uh, within the magic, um, within the magic website itself. Um, so, oh, I'm not. Well, let's see. I can kind of go into your private workspace, Nick. Do I have permission? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're in Nick's private private workspace here. Um, and so, just to highlight, one of the things that can be a real challenge, uh, and this is true even in, in our group is terms of getting all that metadata into a contribution. Uh, so even for us, we use DMAG GUI, which I'll show away tomorrow, converting from our lab format, doing uh, analysis to create interpretations of say directional data, uh, saving those out all programmatically. But we still then need ways to say, hey, these data are coming from uh, within a stratigraphic section in a basalt using those controlled vocabularies. So we have, there are tools built out in PMAG GUI for doing this, um, but having these built out within the context of the uh, of the website here. So I'll just bring up an example here. You can at, at present um, pop pop in here and actually say this isn't lunar. Uh, this is a terrest terrestrial section, um, and actually change that, and you can save save edits here. Um, so this is a nice current functionality. Um, with being able to add data, but we want to sort of continue to enrich this. One thing that's nice here is I could say, oh, that was misentered all the way through, and we can do a do a do a drop down there. Um, but anyway, continuing sort of getting input on these, you know, what is going to sort of facilitate getting that richness of of metadata metadata, in. and these are uh, things that Ru Rupert is working uh, working to implement. Okay, so that's enough of me talking because we want to hear from all of you all. Um, so we have breakout group discussion leaders from the Magic Advisory Committee uh, and the Magic Core Group, and also from a trout with biceps. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just I needed a title for for you there. So um, 
<laughs> um, so we're we're gonna have um, we're gonna have the soft, soft po people who are interested in talking and providing input on software uh, gather at that whiteboard. Those with the rock magnetic breakout discussion uh, here, and uh, folks talking about paleomagnetic poles at the first room once you step step outside um, behind us here. And magnetostratigraphy is uh, you can you can. Pop, pop where you want. I would say one of the things that we originally did for the, the grant was to propose building out more subdomain views and magnetostratigraphy was one of them. Uh, and then with a budget, uh, a significant uh, budget budget reduction uh, for the program director, that one came out. So I think that is, I mean, but certainly that is, that's actually, Ken, that's a very important point actually, um, is getting community input on, like we can sort of view these as these sort of trial subdomain views. Um, and I think magnetostratigraphy is a perfect example example of where that would be a fantastic future subdomain view um, to en enhance that, that, that interaction. Uh, for the moment, I know that you have expertise within uh, these within the categories here, so you can uh, pick your uh, pick your destination accordingly. Um, so and then uh, our goal in terms of the schedule here will be that we will reconvene as a full group um, before lunch and have a quick wrap up. So my with the breakout group discussion leaders providing a little synopsis of some of the highlights of your conversations. So let's head off for it. <laughs>